Imagine being your third grade self and learning about the Mayan civilization. What if instead of looking into a textbook, you could actually stand at the base of Chichen Itza? I'm uh, lucky enough to be on the virtual reality design team at Google, and some of my incredible colleagues have come up with a device called Cardboard. And how this works is you place your phone into it, and then you can put the lenses up to your eyes, and as you move your head around, it'll create a virtual world for you. So with Cardboard, you can actually stand at the base of Chichen Itza. Uh, virtual reality creates really an infinite set of possibilities for things you can experience. And the team working on Cardboard really deeply believes in the principle that virtual reality can be for everyone. And if virtual reality is going to be for everyone, there's a couple challenges that we're going to have to overcome. The first one's pretty obvious, don't make people sick. Uh, <laughs> It's important, let's try not to. Um, so why do people get sick? What, what is it about you know, roller coasters, both real roller coasters and virtual roller coasters, that cause us to experience motion sickness? So to explain that, let's start with a quick story. Imagine it's you know, a beautiful morning, it's hundreds of thousands of years ago, and you wake up, and the sun is shining, and you get outside of your cave, and you don't see a cheetah anywhere, so that's awesome. Uh, and, uh, the, only, the only problem is you're starving. Um, it's time to start foraging for food. So you start wandering around and you find some berries. And you've never seen berries like this before ever. They're, they look amazing, they look delicious. So you immediately gobble some up and very quickly you realize that things have gone horribly wrong. You hear a ringing in your ears, your vision's a little blurred, but the worst part is as you move your head around, things are kind of whooshy. Um, and this is a really critical moment for you because you, you basically have two choices. You can eject the berries, or if you don't eject the berries, it's unfortunately game over. And the, the people that ejected the berries, they're our ancestor. They're our ancestor because they survived. And uh, motion sickness is actually, it's a defensive mechanism. We've evolved to be incredibly sensitive to vestibular ocular disparities, or disparities between our movement and what we're seeing. So for a virtual reality system, this is incredibly important. In your inner ear, you have your cochlea, which is a, a series of tubes that help you detect motion. And when you're building a virtual reality system, that's only one of two things that's detecting motion. That's your ability to detect, but then also the system itself is gonna have an inertial measurement unit to detect motion. And of course, there's the screen on the system that's sending photons into your eyes. And all of this has to work in perfect unison, in perfect harmony. If you drop any frames, or there's any type of performance degradation, uh, if it freezes for even a split second, that's gonna trigger a lot of motion sickness. So one of the most important things with building the systems is to always maintain head tracking and to never pause at any moment. So assuming we've achieved people being physiologically comfortable with systems, then that moves on to the next big challenge, which is don't scare people, um, also very important. Uh, so one of the easiest mistakes to make when you're designing a virtual reality environment, uh, it's a mistake that I've made as well, is um, you accidentally drop the person into a situation where they're immediately colliding with an object. And this is, uh, it's funny, but also when you experience, it's really uncomfortable. Um, and it's not like actually uncomfortable because it's virtual, it's, it's not real. Um, but you look down and you're just like, this is wrong, you know, like this should not happen. Um, and this is really unnerving. So it's important to talk about comfort, not just in terms of physiological comfort, but also psychological comfort with these environments that are being created. So it's, uh, we have to be familiar with all the things that people are commonly afraid of. So of course you have fear of heights, very common fear. Uh, claustrophobia, fear of small spaces. The opposite of that, agoraphobia. Fear of incredibly large spaces, perhaps with a spotlight shining down on you. Um, <laughs> common fear. Uh, scale can be really interesting. So when you're dealing with small objects, you can feel really powerful and it can be really fun. The objects can have sort of a toy-like quality to them. But if you invert the scale, suddenly you feel very diminished and weak and the objects sort of dominate above you. And this isn't just for trucks. This is like you could be designing a user interface. And if the user interface is just absolutely huge, people will stand in front of it and they'll feel small and powerless. And they'll, they'll be slightly affected by, by how large the interface is. So other common things, people don't like to be crushed. Um, really common. <laughs> this, is, uh, <laughs> this is a bit of an overstatement uh, in, in the diagram. But, uh, I mean, I was using a virtual reality experience uh, learning about the solar system, and I turned and there was a planet coming at me. And um, now my brain was saying, like, get out of the way. Like, this planet is gonna hit you any moment now. And, like, I, I know it's not, but you can't turn off that part of your head that is telling you that it's gonna really hurt when this large sphere uh, collides with you. 
So uh, something to be super aware of when you're designing. Uh, also, people are very scared of sharp objects. Um, again, an overstatement, but yeah, imagine you're designing like a meditation application, and it has beautiful little hummingbirds, and they have little sharp beaks, and one of them you know, hovers up right in front of your eyeball. Uh, you're gonna recoil away to protect yourself, and that's of course the exact opposite effect that you wanna have uh, for you know, a meditation application where people are supposed to be relaxing. So with all of these things, it's important as a designer to be just really intentional with how you're designing, to be aware of when users are slightly afraid in one of these experiences, to understand why, and to be paying really close attention to that. So assuming now that users are both physiologically comfortable with the system, they're also psychologically comfortable, that leads us to the really fun part, which is creating amazing experiences. So the first uh, to consider is, imagine the impact that VR could have on the art world. You could actually surround people with your artwork. You could create experiences that are physically impossible in the real world. So two, two uh, other team members uh, working on the team, Drew Skillman and uh, Patrick Hackett, they've actually created an application called Tilt Brush, and it allows you to both sketch and paint in virtual reality. As I mentioned in the opening, virtual reality can have tremendous implications for education. This is the goal of the team working on expeditions. It enables teachers to take their, their classroom on virtual field trips anywhere around the globe. You could pick anywhere in the world that you want to go. Where would you want to go? I would like to go to the moon. Thailand. Ancient Greece. India. To Nigeria, my homeland. One or maybe all of the seven wonders of the world. When you explore different places, you have the chance to actually learn something new. You want to be able to show the kids that there's something outside of your community that you could go to and learn from and that there's other places you can visit. All right, so let's do our objective and we'll talk about the lesson for today. We're going to take a field trip to Verona, Italy to see the place where Romeo and Juliet lived. I'm going to take you on this field trip under the water. Okay, you guys ready? Pick up your devices and look in your cardboard. What is that? Oh, I see a shark. Whoa! 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 It allowed us to go somewhere we wouldn't normally be able to go. Are we in China? This is the Great Wall of China. We got to see the place itself so we could actually understand what she was talking about. How long would it take to walk the length of the Great Wall of China? So much more enriching than just showing them a picture or just having them read about it. This device can actually make us go to places that we've never been before. It brings the lesson to you. You have to see it for yourself to believe it. There's so much other places to see, so you know that it's never going to end. On behalf of everyone on the team that's worked on these projects, we believe the virtual reality doesn't have to be tremendously expensive. It can have huge implications for everything from art to education. Virtual reality can be for everyone. Thank you. <laughs>